There are a lot of flavors when it comes to power saws. These are the ones I use on a regular basis. I'm gonna talk a little bit about why they're so important and why they're probably the best tool any woodworker can own. To give you some context, power saws have been around for a long time. They were gifted by the Egyptians and eventually this guy used it to change the world. We'll start with a Ryobi. It's old, it's beat up, I think the blade's from over 20 years ago, but you know it's good when it was made in the US of A. Even a top-end power tool company are lacking these instructions these days. This even comes with a full list of spare parts and their part numbers. With an old beat-up blade, you're not going to get a clean finish. But just to show you what an expensive tool can make, is something like this. I built this entire cabinet with a block plane and that Rye AP power saw. Something that is lacking are these twist winglets to adjust the height. In cold weather, trust me, they're not fun. Overall, it's a great saw. Next up, and probably my favorite, is this Makita 18 volt skin that attaches to all my other batteries with a Diablo blade. You'll notice throughout this video, this is the only power saw with an aftermarket blade, a quite expensive one too. That's because I absolutely love this thing. It's portable, which is great. It's got a lot of power and being a newer model as opposed to all my older tools, it has a lot of great features. You can see here the difference of cut quality between my Ryobi and the Makita with the Diablo blade. Having a quick stop break is always good, but it's pretty common these days. And the reason I went for all Makita is because these are all my tools. It makes sense to stick with the same tool so I don't have to buy different batteries and chargers. And before you start thinking it's not gonna be powerful enough, this is an old laminated piece of plywood with an oil-based finish that's been sitting out in the weather for years and it cuts it like butter. Now, if you don't mind losing a few fingers, but you want something with a lot of grunt, go for something like this. It's a larger scale Bosch Blue, quote, professional series, and it can cut through absolutely anything. Obviously, it comes with its drawbacks. It's heavy, it's quite bulky, the torque alone wants to rip your wrist off every time you pull the trigger, but I did use it to power my homemade table saw. These videos are on my channel, so I could recommend this if this is the application you want to use it for. One of the main reasons I went with this power saw is because of the huge base plate. You can drill a few holes, you can attach it to a piece of plywood, and you've got a table saw in minutes. As much as I do love this thing, unless you're a carpenter or maybe a landscaper that needs to cut through thick hardwood that's possibly treated with different oils and chemicals, it might not be worth it. Lastly, for the creme de la creme is the Mikita plunge cut saw. I absolutely love this saw, although it is very expensive for what you're getting. It has a ton of features, everything's dialed in straight out of the box, and it also has amazing waste management. Attach this thing to a vacuum, you won't have dust anywhere. Marketed more towards the carpenter or cabinet maker, you'll only really use this saw for finishing cuts. I would not be cutting thick heavy slabs with this saw, as I'll be too scared to damage it. With the optional guide rails, which you'll need to buy anyway, this saw does not slip off any workpiece. It has a rubber backing on it, so you can place your guide rails on the timber without clamps, make your cut.
With the guide rails actually sticking to your surface with the rubber pads, there's no need for clamping and measuring and marking two or three times. So it's definitely an ease of use tool, but you're paying a premium for it. And the finished results with the standard blade speak for themselves. So these are the tools that I use. I honestly believe a power saw is the most valuable tool in a workshop, especially for ease of use. If I was to recommend any of them, providing you have the batteries to back it up, I would go for something that's cordless. When it comes to power saws, more money doesn't always reflect the quality of your cut. Buy a cheaper saw, put a high quality blade on it, and I promise you it'll treat you well. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.